Reading of St. Paul's Letter to the Galatians Brothers, if you are led by the Spirit, then you are not under the yoke of the law. The works of the flesh are well known, fornication, debauchery, debauchery, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, wrath, intrigues, discord, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I have already done, those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. However, the fruit of the Spirit is charity, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, loyalty, gentleness, continence. Against these things there is no law. Those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and evil desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also act according to the Spirit, correctly. Word of the Lord. Thank God. Proclamation of the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At that time the Lord said, Woe to you, Pharisees, because you pay tithes of mint, rue, and all other herbs, but you leave justice and the love of God aside. You should practice this, without ceasing to aside from that. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you like the place of honor in the synagogues, and to be greeted in the public squares. Woe to you, because you are like tombs that cannot be seen, on which men walk without knowing. A master of the law took the floor and said, Master, by saying this, you insult us too. Jesus replied, Woe to you also, teachers of the law, because you place on men unbearable burdens, and you yourselves do not touch these burdens with a single finger. Word of Salvation Glory to you, Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, imagine yourself walking through an orchard. On one side, they see trees loaded with juicy ripe fruits apples, pears, peaches. On the other side, the trees are withered, with rotten fruit hanging from withered branches. Which side of the orchard represents your spiritual life? This powerful image helps us reflect on the central message of today's readings the contrast between a life led by the Spirit and a life dominated by the flesh. In the letter to the Galatians, Paul gives us a vivid list of what he calls the works of the flesh. It's an uncomfortable list to read, fornication, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, quarrels, jealousy, wraths, rivalries, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Paul is not beating around the bush here. He is painting a clear picture of what happens when we allow our lowest impulses, our selfish desires, to control our lives. But Paul does not leave us in that darkness. He immediately contrasts this grim list with what he calls the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. What a difference! It's like moving from the withered side of the orchard to the lush, fruitful side. Note that Paul speaks of works of the flesh, but of fruit of the Spirit. Works are things we do by our own efforts. Fruit, on the other hand, grows naturally when we are connected to the true vine, which is Christ. We cannot produce the fruit of the Spirit by sheer force of will. It is the result of a life lived in intimate communion with God. Paul concludes this passage with a powerful statement. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk according to the Spirit. This is a call to action, a reminder that our faith must manifest itself in our daily lives. Now, let us turn to the Gospel of Luke, where we find Jesus in one of his most incisive moments. He is speaking to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, and his words are harsh, Woe to you, Pharisees! who pay tithes of mint and rue and all vegetables, but neglect justice and the love of God. Jesus is exposing here a danger that we all face, that of focusing on the externalities of religion while neglecting its core. The Pharisees were meticulous about following the minor rules of the law, such as paying tithes even on the herbs in their garden. But in doing so, they lost sight of what really mattered, God's justice and love. It's not hard to see how we can fall into the same trap today. We can become so focused on following religious rules and rituals that we lose sight of the deeper calling to love God and others. 
We can become like trees that have all the outward appearances of health but produce no fruit. Jesus continues his critique, pointing out the hypocrisy of the Pharisees who like the first places in the synagogues and being greeted in the public squares. He compares them to graves, which cannot be seen, and which people walk on without knowing it. What a powerful image! On the outside they appear righteous and holy, but on the inside they are full of spiritual corruption. Finally, Jesus turns to the teachers of the law, accusing them of imposing heavy burdens on others without touching them themselves, not even with a single finger. Again, we see the danger of a religiosity that focuses on external rules without the internal transformation that comes from a true connection with God. So, how do we unite these two readings? How do we live in a way that produces the fruit of the Spirit and avoids the pitfalls of religious hypocrisy? First, we must recognize our total dependence on the Holy Spirit. We cannot produce the fruit of the Spirit by our own efforts. We need to be constantly connected to the source of spiritual life through prayer, meditation on the Word of God and participation in the life of the faith community. Second, we need to be vigilant against the temptation to focus on the externalities of religion to the detriment of its core. This doesn't mean that religious rituals and practices aren't important, they can be valuable means of grace. But they must never become an end in themselves. The true test of our spirituality is whether we are growing in love, justice and compassion. Third, we must be willing to honestly examine our own lives. It's easy to see hypocrisy in others, but Jesus calls us to look within. Where are we acting like the Pharisees in our own lives? Where are we imposing burdens on others that we are not willing to carry ourselves? Fourth, we need to cultivate an attitude of humility and service. Jesus harshly criticized those who sought positions of honor and recognition. Instead, we are called to follow the example of Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. Finally, we must remember that the Christian life is a journey of continuous growth. Paul speaks of walking in the Spirit. This suggests an ongoing process, one step at a time. Let us not be discouraged if we still see some works of the flesh in our lives. Instead, let us focus on staying connected to Christ, trusting Him to continue His work of transformation in us. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are challenged to examine the orchard of our lives. What kind of fruit are we producing? Are our lives characterized by the works of the flesh or the fruit of the Spirit? Are we focusing on the externalities of religion or allowing God's love and justice to transform our inner being? May we, by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, be like trees planted by streams of water, which bear fruit in due time. May our lives be a living testimony of love, joy, peace, and every other aspect of the fruit of the Spirit and that, by living like this, we can attract others to the transforming love of Christ. May the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little, perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.